Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch with some belated game development news. Last week, yeah, I was on vacation, I'm a little slow on this stuff, uh, Unigine 2.19 was released. Now, 0.19 doesn't sound like that impressive of a release, but with Unigine, every one of these point releases actually has a ton of stuff in it, and 2.19 is no exception. Now, you may not have heard of this game engine before because it's mostly aimed in the commercial space, uh, things like engineering, visualization, real-time concerts, that kind of stuff, and if you have heard of Unigine but not the game engine, the reason why you probably know them is their benchmarks. The uh, Heaven and Valley and Superposition, etc. benchmarks have been around forever. Heaven is one of the more popular benchmarks on the market there. Obviously, it is powered by the Unigine game engine. This is a very functional game engine. Uh, it's a huge player, potentially, in the space that came very late to the space. They'd only really started uh, marketing to game developers a couple of years ago, which is a shame. There's been a few games made with Unigine, but it isn't as big as it probably should be because this is a um, there's a free tier of it available it is a commercial game engine uh, with C++ C sharp as well as their own scripting language support it is a quite powerful game engine and there's quite a bit in this 2.19 release we'll get back to the details of that release in just a second first I'm gonna go hands-on with Unigine itself and here you can see the editor here so one of the big features of the 2.19 release is a bunch of experimental animation features which is definitely one of the areas where Unigine was lacking in the past. Uh, there is also a new addition here uh, from a usability perspective that I really want to point out, but sadly I can't show it in all its justice because for some reason when I am running my video recording software like this guy right here and there is a floating window, it doesn't dock properly. But what they've done is giving you the ability to have multiple asset browsers and this is a huge deal because what you can now do is come here to Windows, and you can create a new asset browser or you can remove one like this so I can add a new asset browser here and it will float into a new window and then what you can actually do is change it up completely so if you want to drag and drop between your projects organize things accordingly you can do that very useful feature and functionality there at the same time you should be able to take it and dock it anywhere unfortunately like I said that functionality is currently bugged uh, because I'm doing video recordings probably not a use case they thought of uh, but if I'm not video recording you basically you can take it just like any other feature and then drag oh it comp <laughs> okay I guess that's uh all of their drag and drop is completely broken while video recording. So uh, you should be able to drop it and dock it in the world. Very neat functionality. One of those things is going to make life much more usable for people going forward. Now we got a couple of new samples to check out here. Uh, so the one we've got loaded right now is one of these animation examples. There is a ton of new functionality. Is tagged currently as experimental, but in the world of animation, things that will make it much more useful in this regard. And again, this was a weakness of Unigine in the past. So for example, here, let's do a uh, look at bone. So right here, switch there, and your character is going to look at that bone. It's a pretty straightforward uh, name, like so. And we also have animation and retargeting and so on. We also have support for state machines, like this. Uh, so you see over here, uh, key, so walk animation. Key, so the guy on the left is walking. Uh, the guy, oops, in the, in the middle there is V to, to turn, so you can increase the amount of state machines. So it's a way of blending animations uh, between different uh, characters and so on. So there's a ton of new uh, animation functionality in place as well, all marked as experimental. And another big area that you're going to find as we jump on over, we're going to do the release blog. Uh, it's got a lot less details. We'll do a quick look at the release notes just for side-by-side -side comparisons in a second. Uh, but there's a lot of focus on performance. So uh, yeah, let's just jump right in and find out what's proved there. So we've got uh, uh, better use of the CPU. So uh, implement a multi-threaded DirectX 12 renderer, uh, significantly enhanced CPU performance. Uh, you can see uh, the results right there. So huge increases as a result. It's also using less RAM and video RAM. Uh, so obviously these are just useful things. So you've just got better CPU utilization as well as better RAM usage. And of course, we've also got faster engine startup times uh, between 1.4X and 1.9X. So potentially almost twice as fast for loading the engine. That is definitely nice. We also have a uh, multi-bounce for dynamic uh, environment probes. I will show you the side-by-side -side comparison of this in just a second. You also have more control over the sky and clouds. This actually has one of the nicest sky generation systems of any engine out there. Same with water. Uh, and now you've got, you can control it via LUTs or lookup tables uh, and get completely different effects by sending in a LUT. 
Uh, we've also got other rendering improvements here. Uh, new materials quality feature lets you balance quality performance using different texture resolutions. Uh, temporal filter for post sensors to reduce noise from SSRTGI uh, effects. Uh, optimized denoiser, uh, removing artifacts in cases of half and quarter resolution of color clamp blur. A pack of DLSS and FSR upscaler improvements uh, and so on and so forth. And then we've also got, it's funny, every single game engine has this and I don't know how many people are actually using it as uh, video streaming via WebRTC. I know Unity does this, and I know Unreal Engine do it. Basically, it gives you the ability to basically host uh, the rendering on a fast computer and then stream it uh, onto uh, browsers or smaller machines or so on. And it's kind of like remote desktop. You're basically sending out just the rendered frames, uh, and it renders on the server. So there is video streaming available there. Um, again, I don't know any people, or many people, especially in the world of game development, that are actually using it. But if you are using it, let me do know in the comment down below. Another really cool new feature here is USD export. Now USD is slowly turning into uh, the interchange format of the future uh, and tools such as uh, Maya, Max, Blender are all getting USD support. Uh, and it's basically a, a format with enough detail that you can get pretty much exactly what you started with out. Uh, so they've got an export now, no importer available yet. Uh, and the problem is this is only available for the SIM and engineering editions via the USD exporter plugin. So this is a commercial only feature. So if you're using the community version, you're not going to get the USD exporter anyways. Um, OpenXR support, so added support for OpenXR. This is a standard from the group, the Kronos group, the same people behind Vulkan and OpenGL for standardizing AR, VR, and mixed reality development. So they have support for the OpenXR API. Uh, plugin for Spider Vision. Uh, it's into a single plugin. So this is. Uh, related to walls projectors with edge blending, warping, and other features early implemented in a set of plugins called wall projectors and easy blend into a single plugger called Spider Vision. Uh, I don't know exactly what you would actually use this for, to be honest. I don't think it's a game de related, development related topic. Uh, then we've got the uh, multiple asset browsers. Again, sadly, with video recording software going, drag and drop completely breaks in Unigine, anyways. But as you can see, you can dock them multiple places. You can pin one in place, have different filters on each one, makes it so you could have your textures in one folder and things in another drag and drop between them makes life just a whole lot easier every every game engine should have support for multiple asset browsers uh faster assembly of material graphs a bunch of other editor improvements and then here we get into again a lot of experimental animation updates including the implementation of look at chains uh bone rotation constraints morph target management several interpretation modes for bone rotations object skin meshes no longer support mesh geometry modification as there is a special procedural mode in which a custom user mesh can be set animation retargeting for object skin message and a bunch of new samples on the API usage. We saw those in action earlier on, at least part of that sample. That is in the C++ samples, by the way. Um, and then on top of that, .NET 8, uh, C Sharp 12 support is in there, which will give you better garbage collection, improved serialization, and a bunch more. So if you are using uh, C Sharp with uh, Unigine, again, you've got release uh, support for the newest version out there. NVIDIA Quadro Sync support for SIM version only, again, paid only. Um, and yeah, so also CUDA integration examples have become available in the engineering edition as well. And so that is the high level of what is in this particular release. Uh, but let's go jump over into the more in-depth version. And I could go through this all again. The only reason why I'm really here uh, is to showcase. So they definitely got a bunch more detail here, uh, but they show their, uh, their changes. Um, uh, the results. So this is the new multi-bounce for dynamic environment probes. And you can see the results of it on. So there's no multi-bounce, multi-bounce. So basically what you're allowing things to do uh, is probes will see and render themselves in reflections. So you're getting uh, more detail. And the biggest area you're going to notice, see that ball right here? Look there. You can see the results of it. So you're getting reflections of the environment itself in reflective surfaces like that. So this is gonna actually have a pretty profound effect on the rendering result, also probably performance. But uh, the other thing you're gonna notice, look at the shadowing behind these guys right here. So you're gonna get much more precise shadowing. So again, we got those reflections in that ball, but as we come across here, you're gonna see their shadows get much more accurate instead of being just blotchy. So this is actually a pretty profound detail change, which is uh, pretty cool. So that's multi-bounce for dynamic environment probes. Uh, I think they have another side-by-side -side comparison in here. Maybe I'm wrong on that one. No, that's it. Uh, so as you can see, there is a bunch more detail in the um, um, a whole uh, 
the full full blown release notes if you want to check that out in more detail. Uh, another thing you might notice here is that the minimum specs have been bumped up a bit. Mostly applies to Unix builds uh, and the the required versions that are available there. And we do have those two new demos. So there's the uh, the render to texture demo here and all of the new animation stuff, including all of these various different demos that have been added in. So definitely some improvements on the animation side of things. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Unigine 2.19. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.